And we are live! Welcome, guys, to another episode of Burning Discussion. I am your host, Extermicide, and happy Memorial Day! And if you are... Ooh, ooh, ooh. If you are a service member, or someone in your family is a service member, thank you. Okay? We have, uh, if you notice, Roar is missing tonight. Roar had to work. So, we will catch Roar again next week. And we may be without Gandex next week. He'll let us know, but um, we had a big episode that was going to be a lot of fun tonight. It was it's actually it was going to be something out of the norm. It was going to be funny, um, but I'm going to hold on to that until Crafter, Gandex, and Roar are all freaking here so we can uh, do this right because these questions are actually very out there. So, Great. Crafter, how you been? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Anything new happening with you? Work. A lot okay. of it. Enough said. And Gandex, you? Same. I'm just working, working, working. Oh Summertime's rolling around. So. See what I have to work with, guys? Man, I get these, like, tired guys coming to the damn show, and they can barely get, they got prop little sticks on the back to keep their, you know, posture up straight and everything. Sunburnt. So, <clears throat> on Saturday, I got my second COVID vaccine, and I was fine on Saturday. Yesterday, not so much fine. Hmm. Felt like I, feel I got kicked that down second the one. Twelve times. That second one felt like someone hit me in the arm with a baseball bat. No, it wasn't my. It was everything. Every, everything hurt. Hmm. That's not You're, good. I hate to hear that because I'm going to get mine this week. So I didn't feel sick like, though. Nah. It just felt like it just felt like someone literally kicked the crap out of you in an alleyway. Yeah, but you're mm. kind of delicate, like a flower, you know. You, so. you say that. You say that. <laughs> Guys, we have with us the the mighty, the freaking amazing Zillin. And if you don't know him from YouTube, I'm gonna allow him. Oh, well, I don't want. I don't want to mess up his introduction like they messed up my introduction on their show. So what I'm gonna let about, him. Man? Oh. <laughs> it, it had nothing to do with you. It had nothing to do with you. Hey, <laughs> Hey, you know what? They they introduced me as the host of the Burning Crusade, which I wish I wish I was because I'm pretty sure the Burning Crusade has more followers than the Burning Discussion. That's true. Yeah, that was plate. I remember that now. But go ahead, uh, introduce yourself to anyone who may be watching who don't know who the hell you are. Uh, my name is Zillin. I have been uh, I've been started creating content on YouTube about. I would say about January of this year, maybe a little later, um, started trying to just try my hand at, at content creation. I had been looking for a game that kind of inspired me to say, I want to make content for this game. And uh, I hadn't really found one and I knew Ashes was out there. And, you know, I, I watched the, the the Kickstarter with all of you guys. I mean, I, I, I saw it, but, but I, you know, I've, my first MMO was Ultima online way back in 1998. So I've been through the gamut of, of all the MMOs and been through all the disappointments and all that. And so I kind of just rolled my eyes at ashes like, okay, yeah, sure. You're going to do all that, you know? And, uh, and so I kind of ignored it for a while. And then it was even worse when I got the email that was like, download ashes and play it today. And I downloaded it and it was the apocalypse that, that Fortnite battle royale whatever version and i was like what the hell is this and uh and so i kind of put it in the back burner and then one day on a whim we were all stuck inside our houses in 2020 right and uh on a whim i just went and and uh started looking at content and started and i saw i found i found my way to the live streams the one that they've done and i started watching that you could literally see the the progress that was being made on the game from month to month to month and then I started checking out some of the videos and maybe some of y'all's videos. And um, I just, I, I fell in love and I was like, this is the one, this is the one I want to do. And, and so then I started teaching myself how to do Photoshop and After Effects and DaVinci Resolve and, you know, whatever, all the programs and SEO optimization, <laughs> just all that nonsense. It's hard to make content. And, uh, and once the uh, the NDA dropped, like my, you know, I, I started getting a lot of a lot of viewers and a lot of people watching and stuff, and um, it's been a lot of fun. And I invite any of you guys to go uh, to go check out my channel. And if you like Ash's content, then that's you know that's what I do. Outstanding. And how did uh, project creation come into uh, the mix? <laughs> you know, uh, that was 
pretty when it was still pretty early on with me making videos. So I I was really looking to get my name out there um, in any way that I could. And uh, Plate put in a you know just put a, a post on the Ashes of Creation uh, content creators Discord. They, there's a there's a Discord that's just for the content creators. Um, it's basically looking for somebody that could be on their be on their uh, podcast. And I said all right, and I hopped on with him and. And it just, it went really, really well. And I have a background in radio, so I've, I'm pretty comfortable. Just, I can just get in a group with any group of people and just start talking, you know? And, uh, and so it it just went really smoothly and it it went really well. And afterwards, Plate started talking to me and he was like, you know, if you wanted to be like a member of this podcast, you know, we could do that. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And so we started doing that. And then we started, I started talking to him about, uh, let's, let's invite, try to get some of the other content creators from uh around the community on and and so we we got uh we got extermicide on and uh we're we're looking at getting bard tick on i think next week and uh you guys know roar so maybe we'll have a conversation with roar too and and get him to come on as well so um uh, yeah that's how that started just kind of organic like that but it's gone really well since then outstanding Man. outstanding so you 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 had no prior relationship at all with plate before this no not at all not at all just he he needed somebody to come talk and 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 uh that happens to be one of my skills so we did it <laughs> all right gandex got anything nice here for a minute uh not at the moment um so i guess i guess you did mention you played ultima online what other mmos have you played in the past yes <laughs> all, all of them i mean you, excellent I, you know I, comprehensive I, list. I, yeah. mm-hmm. um i played i played uh okay, well, well online well, until, until... What, what do you think you spent the most time on what mmo do you think you spent the most time on or, or that you were the most well, attached to oh well that's those are yeah those are two different questions um the mmo that i spent the most time on was star wars the old republic but that was only because through a series of crazy events, like really crazy events, I became the leader of a raiding guild, even though I didn't know what the hell raiding was. And, <laughs> and, and then we became a competitive raiding guild. And then we came to one of the top raiding guilds on the server. And like, you know, I became known throughout the whole server as like the tank on the server. I was like the best tank on the server. Um, that was a whole other thing. So I spent a lot of time playing that game. Um, but my favorite MMO and the one that I, I just pined for all the time is dark age of Camelot. I loved that game. Yep. Just, I mean, I, I got, I still to, I got go to back play and play toward the, the end of its lifespan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then that's definitely was the worst, uh, the worst of it. That was, you know, yeah. uh, the, the early, <laughs> early dark age of Camelot man was amazing. I love, I love that game and almost everything about it. Yeah. That was a good game. I got my oh. start on Ultima online as well. So nice. we share some history on that. Nice. Did you, did you get in there before they had the trammel and Felucca split? Oh yeah, I was there. I was in okay. testing phase for that game, oh, so nice, I was there nice. from the very beginning. Okay, that was my nice. first experience with MMO, and I, right, yeah, it was awesome. It's funny. I, I played all the prior Ultimas, you know, one, two, and three. I never mm-hmm. played the online. All the single players. Yeah, that's weird that you would play the single player games and then not logically transition into the MMO. You know, you think you would, and I did. That's what I did too. Right. But yeah. I, I, I played what's your all. favorite Ultima of the single players? Uh, uh, Quest of the Avatar, I think, was my yeah, favorite one, probably. Yeah. 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 Is that four, right? Yes. Uh, I think it was like, yeah, was something like that. I don't know. I've slept since four. then. <laughs> okay. I think that was four. Six was always my favorite, favorite, but four was really good, too. Lord British. Uh, God damn any any day you could ask me what the guy's real name is and I freaking know it and I don't know. Freaking... <laughs> Where'd he go? <laughs> snap, 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 snap out of it. Yeah, any any day you could ask me what uh, you know, Lord British what his real name is and I can't I would be able to Richard answer Garriott. it. Richard Garriott. Richard Garriott, yeah. Yeah. Where's he at anyway? Where's he been? I don't know. He, he For made, the last uh, four five uh, years. Shroud of the, the Avatar. Uh, Shroud of the Avatar, yeah, that's what it's yeah. called. Yeah, He's but doesn't making, he have like a newer project going on, a, a current project happening now? I haven't heard anything since Shroud sure of the does. Avatar. No, that I, just kind of was the up. last thing I heard. Yeah, I, I actually no played Shroud of the Avatar, and I was just kind of like, eh. 
All right. No, so I lost, same. I lost interest. Yeah. Let's let's get into the down and dirty then. Okay. So I'm assuming you. So I was dealing with something else while you were saying some of that. So I, I I'm, I'm sorry if I actually missed it. Lazy peons video is basically what you saw that actually got you interested in. No, no. Um, I I was sitting at home. And uh, I believe the game that I had been playing was Scrap Mechanic. And I don't know if you all ever played that, but it's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, that, that game it. had kind of worn, worn its uh, run its course either. for me. And I, I played it. And, uh, and I was just looking for something to do. And again, it was 2020. We were all trapped inside our houses. You know, we were, I was in, in the house all day, every day, basically. And, uh, and I was just on a whim. I just started looking into it. And, and it, I, don't, I don't think Lazy Peon's video had come out yet, because I think that didn't come out until like November of 2020. And this was like August of 2020. Um, and, and, but I, I, what really got me going was the development live streams and getting to see in real time, if you watch them, if you go back and watch them in chronological order, you can see the game being developed. You saw mm -hmm. things that were going on and you got to actually listen to Steven talk. And, and while I don't think by any means he's like, god or anything he he very clearly has an understanding of the the magic of mmos that has been lost over the years and and it was interesting to see all his thoughts and ideas of about how you could put that into a modern mmo and still capture a modern audience and and all that and so that just that's what really got me going and th then i found you know, Roar and Lazy Peon and, and, you know, all the other, uh, creators, Alpha Soul. I really liked Alpha Soul's videos. He's one of my favorites. Gotcha. Yeah. I've watched some of his stuff. Shout out. Um, okay. So the, my, my next question for you then would be, um, and I'm, I'm actually drawing a freaking brain fart here because I just had it on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. <laughs> That's the wow. worst, man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the age is showing yeah <laughs> what do you mean yeah <laughs> yeah i take that shit from roar but not from freaking fake roar <laughs> I, hope, I hope you didn't invite me on this channel thinking i was gonna go easy on you <laughs> <laughs> no okay so you, you you go you go into this you get attracted to this game so you know now lazy peons video was the point where I said, okay, I'm really interested in this. And that's when I went to go ahead and sign up. However, when I went to sign up, it told me I already had an account. So apparently I had seen the game sometime sooner, was interested in it, <laughs> signed up and totally forgot about it over some period right. of time. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also that lazy peon uh, video came out and then Steven Sharif started his world tour of uh, being on everyone, all the big streamers <laughs> freaking, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're, they're cast and everything. Tour, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I, and I mentioned it here on my own cast before, and I mentioned it before, you know, the other night on yours, you know, even either Steven is, he, he's smart as shit. And either he's really meaning everything he's saying, or he's the best used car salesman in the world because he's telling us exactly what we all want to hear. He sure is. Um, so when you started hearing him talk and everything, was there anything specific that attracted your attention more than anything else? I mean, the, the specific thing was the return to the old school MMO vibe the 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 what he, what is the he always uses risk versus reward yeah you know, mm -hmm. and and we've we've gotten rid of that in mmos and more than anything and i think you mentioned this um on, on our podcast but it is the return of community he has designed all these systems within this game that are i mean they are more or less you're gonna join a community or you're gonna fail at this game i mean that is the the systems are built in that way and i remember like, so, so for example, when I played Ultima online, you know, so many hundreds of years ago, um, every town, there was like 10 towns. I don't remember exactly how many, but every town had like this people, even though you didn't have a house in that town, you kind of lived in that town. That was the bank that you always use. And you always knew where all the merchants were in that town and all that stuff. And you recalled back to that town at the end of your, at the end of your adventures for the day and you know, that sort of thing. And so 
you saw the same faces, you saw the same names, those people had reputations, you had a reputation, your actual reputation actually mattered. And, and I loved that. I, oh, I loved that so much about that game. And Dark Age of Camelot had it on a little bit of a lesser scale. And then by the time World of Warcraft came around, I mean, that the, the community part had just died. It was just gone, especially, you know, four or five years in after World of Warcraft, when everybody was just trying to make the same game over and over again. Um, and so, yes, that that focus on building communities or forcing people to join communities, I would say, is the thing that really attracts me to the game and and makes me think that Stephen No has a has a innate understanding of what he's doing or how to attract that uh, old school MMO player base. Yeah, one of the uh, one of the reasons that specific conversation came up, guys. Um, and I'm talking again, Excellent Crafter was I actually watched one of their videos um, about ships, and in it, it, it was really interesting to me in the aspect that you know we we've done the topic before too, but the, you know we there are certain things that they touched base on that we didn't. And one being the community aspect of it, being that if you're a shipbuilder, okay, so you're building your ship and everything, but you can't build that whole ship yourself. You got to rely on other people in the community, you know. So therefore, if you need the sails set ship, you might have to go and get them created by a tailor. That that makes sense, and that's going to make it so the freaking game relies on people communicating with other freaking people to get stuff done. And again, well, this we- is. We Go have ahead. touched base on that. Maybe not when we were talking about ships specifically, but definitely when we were talking about the crafting and the complexity of the pieces needed. Because ships are one of those ones that's going to take a lot of different parts from a lot of different crafters. So, I hope. yeah, I, th- I, th- I think we always mention the parts part of it, but we never really mention you know it's going to rely different types of crafters. You know, you it's it's going to be a lot of legwork. You know, to get all the things you need. And it's not just for the ships. Um, caravans are going to be the exact same way, you know. So siege equipment as well, right? Yeah, but you know, one of the interesting things about about this specific part of the conversation, um, did any of you guys play Lord of the Rings online? Yes. Yes. Did you play early Lord of the Rings online? I was the in the beta. For that. You yeah. in the beta. So I don't know if you remember this, but back then, a, a blacksmith, a sword, a swordsmith couldn't make a sword without a carpenter to make the sword handle for him. Yep. I remember and, that. And, and so and every single, yes, every single one of the crafters could not do things by themselves. They had to have another crafter to do it for them. And it's one of those things that the complaining about it started at a low rumble and then got bigger and bigger and bigger until it was a massive roar. And they finally changed it. Right. I think we think want the something rings anyway. until it becomes oppressive, and then you're just like, "Oh my!" <laughs> the yeah. trading system that Lord of the Rings Online had at the beginning was pretty terrible, and I think that was part mm-hmm. of it. Um, I, it probably there, was. There, there wasn't a good marketplace. There wasn't like a way to post things very well. So unless you had guild members, that that was the easiest way to do it. Is if you had guild members, because spamming chat resulted in almost nothing, no responses. Right. Right. So it, it was it wasn't a very good fleshed out system back then. But yeah, so, no, so I, with I remember you guys it, calling it a, a, so with you calling it a frustrating and a pain in the ass system and everything. If this is the way if this is what we are returning to, are you guys actually on board for this or is this something as you long rather as not see? I, I would love <laughs> to see tough. it. I'm fine. I'm fine with the complexity of it, but there needs to be an efficient way to trade. Exactly. So like yeah. wow has wow has a very good auction house system i think which we uh, will sure not have, have in as well. right yeah, we'll we will AFC to a have. point it'll be localized it won't be worldwide it'll be localized right. but that, that will still be something um yeah, well, and I, don't remember, I don't remember the yeah. specifics of lord of the rings online but i know at the beginning especially in the beta mm-hmm. the trading system didn't even just per, in interpersonal trading just going up to someone and click you know right clicking trade or however the mechanic worked it was clunky and it didn't work very well so right yeah, uh, and I'm yeah, I'm definitely not saying that uh, that the system itself was the was the whole failure, but there was definitely some uproar regarding that. And so the, it's it's interesting because it, to answer your question, X, um, yes, I'm on board completely. I'm fine with that. I want that. I want I want them to force community to happen. But you people need to understand and it, it is. <clears throat> 
people, there's going to be complaints. Like there are a lot of people that are following this game right now that are hyped about it, that are ready to play it, that are listening to everything that Lazy Peon and Asmund Gold and Tim the Tatman and et cetera says about this game and they're excited about it and they have no idea how hardcore it's going to be. And and so the, the complaints are going to be. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, <laughs> and, that's and, not going to be single player friendly. You're not no, going to be able to corner no. the market all well, by yourself. Um, you have to have a team. I think mm-hmm. it'll I think single player people will be fine. They there will be a lot of content they can't do. Crafting is gonna be one of those that they can't right. do by themselves. Depends on what they want to do. Yeah. If they just want to explore, so you're, good. You're gonna you're be the safety of your node is something you're not gonna be able to do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't. Once they revive every dialogue. five minutes, they'll but be to okay. be fair, even if you're in a party, you might die a lot. So Less likely, no, you, though, no, there's absolutely. that old saying, safety in numbers, man. Yeah. Well, the Learn other team has a bunch of numbers, too. I'm just saying, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Learn to play, man. Stop being a Care Bear. Yeah, yeah. Tactics. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that was the old Crafting Dark Age of Camelot every time somebody complained about unbalanced. Uh, One unbalanced of the games that of we tactics. reviewed, I, you know, and I was telling you about the Times 2 review project that yeah. I have. One of the games we did review was Lineage 2. I never yeah. played the game. But I know that Steven is basing a lot of ashes on Lineage 2. Yes, he is. It scored really freaking low. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, it was either, I can't remember if it was a D or an F for the final grade, but I mean, it was. Right. Now, I understand the game is ancient by today's standards and everything. Yeah, it just. But it was uh, niche back then. But you would think over time. If they're going to keep it running this long, there's a lot of things in it they would have fixed by now, and there's stuff that you know has been there since the very freaking beginning. <laughs> right. I don't have a problem with Steven having such a fan love for a particular game that he wants to create his project and use that game as inspiration. Mm-hmm. But I do have a problem if you're going to try to recreate the same game from the ground up you know 20 years right. freaking later um in, in a lot of aspects there's no need to try to recreate the wheel and there's a lot of right. there's a lot of things that have evolved in in mmos over the years for and they've evolved for very good reason because they work you know we we've gotten accustomed and used to doing certain things and you you notice that in the alpha like um here's a very very simplistic freaking example you know if you're looking straight forward and you know and i think i may have mentioned this during the show the other night i'm not sure but if you're looking straight forward and you start running forward by pressing that w key and you want to sprint what do you do you press the shift key okay so if you're on a horse and you're pressing w and you're traveling straight forward and you want to sprint what do you do in 99 percent of the freaking mmos out there we press the shift key. That's the sprint key, mm-hmm. no matter if you're mounted right. or not mounted. But in Ashes, it's shift. What was F1? it? Shift F. Shift F one. I, I think it's shift F one. And I, and I'm like, really? You know, we're we're gonna change the mechanics. We're gonna start remapping the keyboard and shit that freaking much. I understand because he had that shift F1, F2, F3, F4 bar for when you're mounted. So I understand your mount's going to have some freaking abilities or you're going to have abilities that are only available to you on mount. Sprint should not be one of those abilities on the freaking bar. You know, shift is sprint. Don't reinvent right. the wheel. And, and you know, that's one of those things that, I mean, I, I noticed it, but I wasn't going to get upset about it because... It, we're so early in development that 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 could change three times between yeah, do, now and then. And do keep in mind that all the key bindings and everything is just temporary at the moment. Right. You can't you can't change any of them. And they're just they just gave you a set of key bindings and said get after it. And it also like you have to think about it from this perspective as well. Um, the 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 horses shift or the horses sprint uh, might be a key because it's actually going to be an ability that changes based on what type of horse you have or or maybe a specific node you live in or, you know, whatever it may be different. And so you can't put it on shift because that's an, that's not an actual ability press um, versus what shift F1 is cumbersome though. So it is, but you'll be able to change that. 
you'll be able to change that later. You just can't change it now. I mean, I don't want to you come know. across as sounding like a complete ass or, or a moron or, you know, you know, you look, yeah, I know it's freaking alpha, but right. I have been in alphas before where you see something as simplistic as this and everybody says, oh, well, it's alpha. They're going to change that by the time it goes release. And everyone has that mentality and no one speaks up about it and it never gets changed. But, but has that been your experience with this alpha? This alpha is very early, so I, I really don't have any that well, okay, much experience but that, that, that so far. Right. But what so we've seen, I, like, okay, so what I've seen so far is that. I'll be right back. I when, have a cat to take care of. <laughs> what I've we'll seen so far you. with, yeah, with, what I've seen so far with this alpha, um, are both of you guys in it? I am, yes. I've, I've been you in are? it before okay. the other ones. I don't think before the other not in it. I'm no, not. Okay. No. Um, what I've seen is that when, when the, the, uh, outcry, it doesn't even have to get that loud. Just once a few people point something out, they go and look at changing it and they make those changes very, very rapidly. Um, mm -hmm. they seem to, they, they seem to really listen to the community. And that, that was one of the things when I, when I started doing the, the alpha videos that I was just blown away by was the responsiveness yeah, of this development team they're very responsive and mm -hmm. and so i was i i, I kind of go i'm i'm a little bit double minded about that because that's really awesome but then i'm also uh very concerned that they're going to be responsive to the care bears when they go mm -hmm. live and the servers get flooded by care bears and if they listen to those people then this well, is just going to be another mmo if if you look at the forums and all the all the alpha feedback on those forums it's it's very detailed for what people are are posting responding to mm -hmm. um, any issues that are, that are coming up and numerous times people have complained about the current key binding situations wanting them to be either changed and or have an option so that you know they can change them individually etc right and they've responded several times and saying this is all temporary you know eventually we will reevaluate and it will be you know like every other That's game where you, you can assign your own key bindings so mm -hmm. yeah i, I, love, I just i don't uh, i don't think I, I, I gotta say this real quick zill and i love having you on the damn show because you use a lot of the same terminology that i use being like care bears and hardcore which gandex absolutely <laughs> hates these freaking words <laughs> uh, I don't. Th this is literally the first episode I've ever heard you use the word Care Bear. Really? Uh, we have a whole episode as as entitled Care Bears. Was I <laughs> not there that day? He may not have been on it. This, so, this is, um, but as far as sure hardcore, that, that is all based on perception. I, I personally think that's all based on perception. So. Sure. Someone who plays, you know, Apex Legends and uh, Fortnite might view hardcore differently than someone who plays you know dark souls i've been uh, uh no absolutely i i'm talking specifically about the mmo genre it's hardcore foreign mmo especially when put in comparison okay, sure, to the sure. games where where you but don't lose your stuff and someone you know, plays a korean thing. mmo where you're given daily login gold yeah you know someone's going to view that as not hardcore where they're going to view a game that doesn't give you that as hardcore it's it's all based on personal perception sure so. sure absolutely um, all right let's I mean, change for me, direction here just for a little bit um i i want to get your viewpoint about something and the, the elephant that's been in the community for this last week when you saw that news of jeffrey baird stepping down how'd you take that Bard. jeff bard leaving Oh, well, Bard. Um, I think I said Baird. Okay, yeah, Bard. Yeah, thank yeah. you. You just say Baird. So losing your lead designer, I think, is a. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it and say, "Oh, it's going to be just fine. Don't worry about it." Like it is an issue, um, and you know, I've heard. Yeah, you know, I was in uh, no somebody's stream, and they were talking, and uh, there was a guy in the chat in there that was saying like. You know, he had heard that he actually got fired. He wasn't, he didn't quit. He got fired. And like all these rumors started swirling around and that maybe the team wasn't happy with him. And, and, and I, I don't know any of that. I and so. and I, I try, I, I don't know. I don't, after watching, that's what I was going to say. After watching the live stream 
like you could feel the love and adoration that those guys had for Jeffrey Bard just by the way the yeah. stories they were telling, that the way they genuine. were acting. You can it tell. was very genuine, yes. And mm. so I, I don't think that there was any type of a bad break or bad, you know, uh, uh, situation, a bad split there. And what I got out of it, and this is straight up reading between the lines, reading the tea leaves, just listening to what Stephen was saying and trying to like get to what he was actually saying. Um, it sounds to me like we already know he left to go because he wanted to pursue his passions in VR. They told us that. Um, it sounded to me like he left to go to a specific project and it is a major project that people are going to flip shit about when it happens. So I'm thinking a major IP that we all already love, like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or maybe a video game franchise that we all, you know, whatever. I feel like that's what he went to go do. And if if you I don't necessarily agree with you, but if you think VR is the next big thing. And you're being offered an opportunity to go do that somewhere and it's for a major, major franchise and a major project. Maybe you go. So, it, I, I mean, it can't, it can't, it couldn't be have been an easy thing. decision for him. No, no. Um, but at the same time, it does seem like, you know, just based on what I've experienced in the alpha, it seems like he's left the game in a pretty good place. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with where they are in the alpha right now. And, and so, you know, hopefully they find somebody that can, uh, uh, you know, be as good or better than him. Were you, you watching know? the live stream live as it happened? Yes that chat was going crazy. And, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the thing that was really strange to me, is it, it almost seemed like Steven and the crew were avoiding the Jeff Baird, the Jeff Bard. Why do we keep saying Baird? The Jeff Bard um, um, topic. It, you know, it almost seemed like they were avoiding it. And everyone in the chat's like, where's Jeff? What's Jeff? You know, you know, and someone's like, you know, he was fired, you know, and the chat was just going crazy. Jeff, 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 Jeff. Right. And they weren't talking about him. And they're announcing all this stuff, you know, new cosmetics change and blah, blah, blah. And they're just avoiding the whole Jeff topic. And I'm like, really? They're, 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 they're going to do him a disservice like this? But then, you know, when well, they came I and mean, they started talking before about... Before the... Know... Go ahead. Before the live stream, they did make the announcement. I mean, so it wasn't like they were totally trying to sweep it under the rug or anything but oh, no, i mean no, no. yeah but 90 kinda, of the it, people maybe they coming, just had planned to do it later yeah but, but 90 percent of the people in that live stream knew nothing about it you know and it was obvious well, they didn't know nothing about it they they always come up with an itinerary and i'm i'm assuming for good think, reason they they did announced it later in the show rather than at the beginning because then they would have just been bombarded with just as many questions you know so I think they had just planned on doing it later in the live stream, and right. they just finally I, just had to address it. Yeah, I thought I, honestly, I thought live that it was a mistake to do it that way. I think that they should have opened the show with uh, the same, the, exactly what they did, the little memorial, the stories, and all that stuff. Just get it right out of the way. This is what happened, and then we're moving on. But I think I'll but, go one step beyond that. I and I told these guys the day we got the freaking news. I. I thought for that last show, they should have had Jeff on the show one last time. Let him say goodbye yeah. to the community. Let him yeah, reassure nice. the community. I'm leaving on my own terms. Right. But that, maybe that, that was a been, long yeah. way. Maybe that wasn't in the cards, though. We don't know. Right. You know, we just have to take things at face cool. value for what they are. And I, I agree. It would have been awesome. But we have to take things at face value for what they are. Try not to read. You know, you can read into the lines if you want, but don't speculate on it too much otherwise you're gonna come up have with you have you ever crazy. been given a uh a take it or leave it right now offer of me course, i have no a, no but but i, I, I have I, a couple times and that's what i'm saying yeah that's I what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> maybe he was given an opportunity that it, you had to go now and he it wasn't it was, in the cars it was to be right on that now. show mm -hmm. so you know I'm, I'm not saying that's definitely what happened i'm saying it could be and it, then yeah, it, and know, it could we be. can't have him on but take um, things at face value um right that's what i try to tell until we see jeff blow up Twitter or Instagram or whatnot with <laughs> negative comments, you know, right. then just oh, take he's, it for what he's it is. He's got an NDA. He can't do that. Wow. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> From He'll my put it under someone else's. <laughs> so, 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 so I want to say first... something about that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Drafter. Well, from I, I have been wanting to get something off my chest about that whole situation. And from my perspective, as someone that's focused on crafting and economy, uh, I'm I'm sad about that because I've done my research on him 
and I know that he was an old-time Star Wars Galaxies player. And the crafting system in that game was something that he understood was awesome. And he drew a lot of strength and inspiration from that. And it was, you know, it was going to influence his decisions on the way that he steered the crafting system in Ashes of Creation. That was a good thing, in my opinion, because I spent a lot of time in that game, and I knew that that was an awesome system. So to see somebody like that that was heavily influenced by something of that nature gone, that really bothers me, Um, especially seeing how... They haven't really come forward with any information on who possibly might fill his shoes. I, I mean, I realize that in I believe they promoted Alpha from 2 is when and we McPherson will really get to now see that. Guy. Possibly. I but think I that's know. what happened. And my first impression is about that. programmer, isn't he? Yeah, but I'm I'm specifically referring to Jeffrey's a, influence about the crafting right. and economy system. I'm I not worried about you. servers or engineering or anything like that. I think I, I think his title was lead developer or something like that, and he he was the lead developer for Planet Side One and Two and EverQuest Great, One and Great. Two. Yeah, and, and and the reason why that's important, especially where Planet Side One and Two is concerned, is these are the games that had the 500 versus 500. And if you're going to want to do that kind of freaking mechanic in Ashes, this is the guy who knows it better than freaking anybody else. So, well, you know, besides his voice being but a little robotic. But to me, he was my one ace <laughs> in the hole that I knew about at this time. Right. Jeffrey. And I was like, no, oh, yes, is- Jeffrey's in my corner. You know, he's going to pull for this and that and the other. But, you know, We have whatever. Roar in chat. We have Roar in chat. Crafter. Those, so, those crafting systems are mostly already yes. drawn no. up. Like it might not be, they're not implemented in the alpha yet, obviously. Alpha, but a lot of those ideas and concepts, they're they're already fleshed out. They're already fleshed out. Yeah, I was gonna say they're probably not gonna change too much. So I wouldn't be concerned about the crafting aspect. So and yeah, McPherson has all that experience with those large multiplayer combat systems. My only concern is, I don't remember what engine Planet Side uses, but it's it's not Unreal as far as I'm aware. So it will be, again, a bit of a challenge. He, uh, I, I, I think he quelled the community enough to, you know, made them feel like he's someone who's at least, com- you know, competent. And we'll just have to wait and see. You know, that, that's all I can say is, uh, he seems to have the personality of a slug, you know, and the voice of a robot. But you know, he might be a freaking brilliant mind. So we, we'll just have to wait and see. That's what I got. I was like, I, this guy is one of those people that has to like dumb down everything he says for everybody that he talks to because he's so much smarter than all the rest of us. That's the, that's what I got out of him when I'm just watching him. So when you play an MMO, what, what kind of character do you usually play? Um, well, I'm always a tank. Um, I have, I spent the better part of the last decade, as I was saying earlier, oh, as a you. very, a very, very, very hardcore Raider I mean, we were on the bleeding edge of the content. We were competing for server firsts and world firsts and, and all that stuff. Um, and so that has always been, or not always, but for the last decade, that's been my my focus. And I always I always try to you know be the most meta end game tank that you can possibly be. Um, I will say that with with the way Ashes is going, I do not believe at this point that they're going to have difficult raids, like truly difficult raids. And so I don't think that uh, in-game raiding guilds specifically is going to be a thing. I could be wrong. That's just my reading the tea leaves. Um, the feeling we get I, on that part of it is they're, they're open dungeons. And if you're going if in with your raiding better. party, we're fighting a boss or whatever. Another raiding party can come in behind us and right. start killing us and steal the freaking kill of the boss. And... It's, again, there comes out with that word, that hardcore. They may word, be you know? designed easier for just that reason. But, you know, that, the, because that's you're already going to have your hands full. Yep, that's one of three reasons that I have why I think that uh, that it's not the rating's not going to be that hard. Um, but so I have this theory that I've started to develop over the last, let's say, six months or so, as I've started to 
to look into the rating and try to figure out if I want to make a rating character or a rating guild or any of that stuff. And it's kind of, it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks because it's something I didn't realize. Um, and I haven't really fleshed the theory all the way out. So I may not be able to talk about it at the level that I would usually want to, but um, it's something along the lines of rating and queued PVP arena style PVP is a, is a stand in for real content and always has been because you don't have anything to do at the end game because your nodes not de-leveling and because you don't have to protect a caravan, you know, all these things that are being put into ashes that are going to give us things to do at end game. And that's why you get this situation in world of Warcraft or, or other games like that, where you get the raid loggers. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. The people mm -hmm. who only play the game for the three hours a week that their team is raiding and they don't play the game at all. Other than that, but now you're not going to get that because your node might be getting attacked or there might be a castle siege to go do go to or you need to get your caravan over there or whatever. And so the entire concept of raiding, at least in the the terms of like the World of Warcraft style, um, instanced really, really tight boss fights, making it really difficult, making that the the pursuit of more gear, the gear grind. Um, I think that's a stand in for uh we don't know how to make the game interesting at end game without doing that. And so when I started to realize that I started to go, Oh crap. I, I my idea, I have to re recalculate my identity. I got to figure out what I'm going to be. And, uh, I think I, I'm leaning more and more. I think I'm be hanging out with crafter, man. I'm thinking I'm very seriously considering making a crafting based, uh, economic guilt. That's 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 wow. what, I think that's where I'm going to end up. Okay, but so you, this... you did say you that you you mostly play a tank type class. Yes, I always play. Tank. Do you have any? Obviously, we know very 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 little about any of the actual cl classes from the tank archetype. Do you have any idea of which class that you would like? To secondary, play? you mean? The secondary archetype. Well, um, the secondary archetype doesn't it dictates the class, but that's not what the class is called. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, <laughs> yes, I have an idea. Uh, I, I, you, well, you said you played Lord of the Rings Online. I really, really love the captain class in Lord of the Rings Online. And so I kind of see, and it may not be this way, but I mm -hmm. kind of see the tank bard as a tank class that has like support buffs or, yep. or debuffs that you like, you know, that are PBAOE that emanate from you. Um, that's how, so, I mean, that's how I picture it. Well, I mean, we right. can only, that's how wait. I picture it. <laughs> um, so, so that is kind that's where my thought is right now is tank bard. Now I I've always been kind of a min maxer power gamer, meta gamer, whatever you want to call it. So if tank mm -hmm. bard sucks, I won't be that. But, but right now that's, that's what I'm thinking. Tank summoner also has a lot of interesting ideas, you know, depend, you know, being able to summon animals and use them for various, uh, various things so that's that's pretty interesting as well but yeah tank bards where i'm really at okay argent for anyone who's interested in the actual argent name. yeah yeah but yeah God, we, we, memorizing 64 classes is gonna be yeah fun. it's hard it's, it's, it's hard <laughs> you know what we'll, we'll have to we'll wait learn and that see within the first the 30 days you want. well we we already discussed this I, I think different. I think for the most part, people are just going to require like when they're looking for something, they're going to look for the, the primary the primary type. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is right now we're not looking at it all that much, those charts and everything, because they haven't really fleshed out what the other abilities are going to be. And right. soon, and that's going to base a lot of it. You know, once people start seeing, oh, I really specifically like that one ability. I want to be that. I want to be that class. Right. I'm and, playing uh, Paladin. We're just going to have to wait to see what they, what they got for the damn for classes. For me, it's difficult. For me, it's, it's difficult just, because I always generally will focus my main class that I play around my crafting needs. Because a lot of times I can usually, if it's resource gathering or whatever, there is a class that will usually stand out and help you achieve those tasks. You know, for me, a lot of times it'll be like Ranger or something like that because of the things, the skills that it has that. You, know, you mean like something like a mage with needs, a lot of so. AOE where you just kind of round up all yeah. the mobs or, and just, you know, just AOE whatever, them down and then... helps you move faster or anything. Yeah. Yep. yep. You know? Do you but this see... game is kind of up in the air right now. 
do you see Zillin people coming into this game um, who are not PvPers enjoying this game? Here. Okay. So he probably um, fits in I, the category I fit in. See, like, <laughs> I'll tell you this. I hate PvP. I have no interest <laughs> whatsoever in PvP. None. So why do you want to play? I am Just trying this to find my love why for do, PvP again. Why do you want to play a game that where everything, every aspect of the game yes, revolves exactly. around PvP? <laughs> yeah, I, believe me, I understand the conundrum. I I understand yes. completely where you're coming from. Um, yes. So I'm drawing my experience from Ultima Online back when. Mm. That it was the same situation. It's what I call the killer combination. The killer combination is you can be killed anywhere by by anyone, and you drop your stuff when you die. Like that, that those two things when you combine them in an MMO, which there's yeah. only ever been like seven or eight MMOs that have that combination, create a sense of yeah. urgency and awareness and community. It builds a lot of things into a game. And even Man. though I was I was the miner who. I was a miner and a miner because I was 16 <laughs> and I was going out to mine. Um, uh, what I was going was out to mine, beetle? yeah, to try to get yeah. to, to try to bring 200 ore back to town without getting killed. And yeah. I I could have done that forever and ever and ever. I loved it so much. It was so much of a challenge. Now, don't get me wrong. As I'm older now, and I will I will now be more interested in fighting back than I was back then. Um, and I'm not saying I won't PvP. I'm saying all other PVP that we've ever had in, in MMOs that I've played was pointless. You die, you respawn, you run back, you try to kill the guy again, you try to get the point, you try to win the death match, you try to get the ball across the goal, you try to take the castle that's going to get taken 75 more times in the next 48 hours. Like none of it matters, but PVP in this game is going to matter. You're going to have to, you're going to lose your stuff. Your node's going to de-level. You're going to lose your mayorship. You're going to lose your freehold. All that stuff is going to matter. And so even though I don't really give a crap about PVP or never have, I think that it's going to be so much more important in this game that it, I, I will want to do it. And it makes me want to play, even though I'm not, I'm not really looking forward to fighting other players. You're going to be forced to either participate in it or find a way to have to deal with it. Yeah, two, you're not going to be able to ignore it. That's right. Will you be... So, Go ahead, Gandalf. The, the way I'm viewing Zillin's opinion, his views on PvP is that he'll fight to defend himself, but he won't actively go out ganking other players. That's, that's correct. Kinda, I, you that's will never see me and that's kind of how I am, someone. too. I mean, sometimes I get an itch and I want to go you know, with a rogue and right. murder somebody, but most <laughs> of the time, that's not the case. Come to the dark side. <laughs> I plan on making a predator as my secondary. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah, that's that's you, you, you nailed it. I, I will probably never. I will. <laughs> nice. That's nice. Okay. So 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 everything that you said about PvP. Oh my God! There it went again. Poof. Again. Feel like when you get it's because because it, it, it makes you think better. It's it's because I let Gandex go first. It was right there in the freaking trick of my tongue. Are you gonna went first? Somebody get this guy some Metamucil. <laughs> <laughs> I think that just helps with your, your, your destiny track, not, not so much your cognitive thought. Yeah. Go ahead and ask him something because I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna get this frame back up the track. <laughs> Uh, are you playing any MMOs currently? Um, uh, that depends on your uh, on your definition of the word massively. Um, I am playing a very very small MMO that usually has about five hundred concurrent players at all times. Um, what is it's it? Worm, Worm Online. Worm yes. Online. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I remember um, hearing you say that from one of your videos. How was that? Uh, yeah. What is Worm Online? I never even heard of it before. Worm Online is Very Minecraft. Very selective daddy. taste. Yeah. It's Minecraft um, what? It's Minecraft's daddy. And I mean that literally. It was it was developed by Notch before he left the company and went to go form Minecraft. 
Um, and it's the similar similar style. You load into a game on a brand new server. There's literally nothing on the server, and the players build everything. Every building, every road, every last thing in the whole game is built by the players. Um, the economy is completely run by the players. It's all done that way. Um, the problem is that gameplay is literally just watching a blue bar fill up over and over and over again. Like you want to mm -hmm. go mine a rock, you go over there and you, you, you hit mine and you watch a little blue bar fill it for 20 seconds. And then you get one rock shard and then you do it again and you get one rock shard. And as you get higher skills, you know, the, the, the bar goes down, but that's still the, the gameplay is literally watching a blue bar fill up. So it's a game <laughs> that you have to, uh, you have to have a, a, a TV show you want to binge watch while you play it. Right. <laughs> have another screen Pinky going off. Step backwards yeah. for a second. You, you, you said that you were leaning towards being a crafter mm -hmm. in Ashes. So what, what, what do you normally do as your archetype as far as uh, yeah, your skill or whatever you, you want to call it? I mean, are, have you always My, been a crafter? Like profession? What well, artisan profession yeah. you want? Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I've always loved crafting and MMOs. Um, uh, since the very first one since ultima online and pro like since i'm going to be a tank probably armor smithing will be what i go for i'll try to make the best uh the best plate armor in the land um would be the ideal situation now the the caveat to that is if i'm wrong and i've been wrong once or twice in my life before so it could happen again uh, if i'm wrong and rating is like a high-end the rating guild is something that could possibly exist and all that, then I would probably flip it to an alchemist because you, to supply your potions that you need to be a top level raider. Um, but it, assuming that rating is wrong thing, because you know, you, we, we discussed this. Steven thinks he's the best PVP -er in the freaking world. And he's all about the freaking PVP. We, we, we all know he sucks at PVP, but yeah, <laughs> I do believe rating guilds will be a thing. You think so? Because um, completing what, what, dungeons, completing dungeons and raids is going to advance nodes to certain stages. Mm -hmm. It's going to unlock. I, I understand that, but I'm talking so. about high end, bleeding edge guilds. I don't. I don't think the raids are going to be that. that that's difficult. all they do. I. I don't think so. I think right, like the majority right. of what they do. Yes, and that's what I'm talking about because, I, like, I see the rating in this game being like ESO. Um, in ESO. You have, if you have a competent raid team at all, you have two to three times the total maximum DPS than what it takes to beat the enrage timer. Like you have so much more DPS than what's necessary to beat the enrage timer. Whereas in games like Rift and World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy 14 and the, the hardcore raiding games, Star Wars or Republic, you have this much more DPS then is capable to then beats the rage timer. You have to have, if, if your team has four DPS on it, all four DPS have to be God tier in order for you to finish it on the highest difficulty. And I don't think that we're going to have that specifically in, in, uh, in Nash's, my, my, uh, wanna, my take on it. I want to bring up something um, that we discussed on your podcast the other night. And I actually want to bring this up because I really want to get Gandex to chime in on this, get his opinion okay. about it. Um, so one of the things they asked me was, um, what am I uh, worried about concerning Ashes? Now, this is something you guys have never asked me before. So it was just kind of something that just splurred the moment. I'm like, hmm. And my answer basically was as far as guilds go, where people are preforming these guilds right now. And usually in most MMOs, what we end up seeing is your guild pretty much starts in the same location. However, in Ashes, depending on what you're choosing for your profession or your archetype or whatever else you want to freaking do with your particular character, if you want to be a shipbuilder, you might spawn in over here on this freaking node that's next to the water. If you want to be an armor smith, you might decide you want to be a dwarf up here in the freaking mountains and spawn on this freaking node here. So now your guild is spread out all over the place and we're put into a position at that point where there, there's no easy way to freaking make the guild call and say, hey, everybody come here. There's a freaking dragon. We got to fight because no, you know, if time matters, you know, as far as traveling goes, there's no way to get there freaking quick. Uh, everything has to be arranged well ahead of time. Um, and and what, what, as we started to discuss, discuss this particular topic, 
w one of the concerns we we're having is like, you know what? You may have all these guilds that are forming now and everything, and then everyone does exactly what I just said. And then you slowly over that first month, two months, three months, you might start actually seeing people leaving these guilds and starting to reform guilds at the node locations that they're each individually at. And I kind of want to pass that by you, Gandex, uh, see what the hell you thought about that. I, I think I think you're 100 percent correct on that. Um, it's it's so one. I think it's a little premature to be, you know, making all these large guilds so quickly. Um, like raiding guilds or PVP guilds is one thing because they know what exactly what they're going to do. We're going to go, you know, PVP, especially military node. Boom. That's where we're at. That's where we're all going to be because this is one thing we're going to do. Keep going, but you just reminded me what I wanted to ask before. That will <laughs> write it down. Old write it down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I can see a lot of those trading guilds because there are there's a lot that are going to do just commerce and, and gathering and economic and node. I mean, that's where and I'm at. Those, those obviously, you know, they're going to want a headquarters toward an economic node, but they they could be spread out and they could function just fine that way. I don't know. It's going to be hard to tell. Um, I think it's going to be the medium-sized guilds, the smaller ones, that are going to break apart and dissolve quicker than the large ones, I think. But who knows? So. Recluse in chat says 100% correct, but it will usually be the newer members, not the core group, he would think. But it also depends on how the game progresses, what people mm -hmm. that are already in that guild want to do, you know, if it doesn't mesh well. I mean, if you got guys that have been together for freaking years, I can see them never separating, even if they do spawn yeah. in it's you know different locations. But yeah. but I do see but freaking they're going to discuss it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. They've already discussed it. They've already discussed it, right? So that like, I have people in my comment section of my YouTube videos starting. This is only starting in the last few videos, but it's starting to swell up. People saying, "Dude, you should make a guild." I would totally join a guild if you make a guild. And We've I'm had sitting here going, do the "Same thing that we should make a guild." Exactly. And it's like, how, how can I make a guild with you or have you in my guild when I don't know what my ambition is going to be in the game? Mm -hmm. I don't know what your ambition is going to be in the game, and we don't know where we're going to need to be or the how the systems are going to push us to one thing, one place or another. Because again, we've already talked about how we feel like the game is going to be localized in a bunch of small, you know, insulated communities or whatever. Um, I think somebody on our uh, our podcast mentioned that. Um, up until very recently in world history, you pretty much lived and died and lived your whole life within 50 miles or 20 miles of where you were born or Less something like that. that. And I think, and I 10, think this yeah. game, yeah, 10, I up think this game is going to yeah. have some of that in it a little bit. <clears> like you're going to spend your whole time, your whole time in game re in the same relative area. Um, and I think the only so thing that would change is if your node got sacked and then you yes. had to you know relocate you had to move to another um, if you wanted to maintain that same node type you'd have to relocate to another to a, probably the nearest um, node type the nearest i'd like one. to have a oh, night yeah. where the four of us and we also get plate and roar and we, and we got all of us here just talking about this one subject you know about <laughs> guilds because i really think it'd be a fascinating um discussion um we haven't really done a guild topic yet no we haven't touched so. it yet but but the, then again like he said and like you just said it's too early to be is, thinking is, about that right now. I mean, we, 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 I mean, we could speculate, but it, it is. A bit and, early. And, and that's the funny thing in any other MMORPG, you can sit there and form a guild a year, two mm. years, three years ahead of time and know what you're going to be doing in that guild. But in this game, you can't do that. There, there's, there's, there's no telling what's going to happen. Oh, you and, can. The guild I'm a part of has been, <laughs> so you can do it. And I know that you're the one here sitting here that's already in a freaking guild, but I think you guys are going to find on launch day that things are not going to go as smooth as you want. You, just, well, you underestimate how many people are part of this guild. Right. I think the economic <laughs> note is the one that's able to do it because you can say, you can look at it and go, we're all going to be crafters and focus on that. We're all going to move to an economic node. We don't know which node it's going to be yet, but we'll all we'll make that decision once we have more of the map and play more alpha. And but, then you know you're going to be a gatherer, you're going to be a, a processor, and you're going to be a, a, a 
crafter, the artist in itself, and you guys are going to be a team and go. I could see that being a lot easier than uh, pretty much any of the other uh, so traditional I, I, guilds. I out. disagree. I, I think the okay. PvP aspect will be easier because it's literally like military node, go. Yeah, there's a good point there, too. So with the crafting, though, if you want to be an alchemist, let's say, or, or uh, if you want to be a miner, you're going to want to be near mountains because you're going to find more mm -hmm. ore nodes in the mountains. Mountains most likely won't be near the coast. So if you want to be a shipwright, you're going to want to be by the coast. So that's right. where the I'm not saying you can't do an economic guild, you know, focus right. on, on one node. But I do feel like that their members are going to be a bit more spread out. So no, no, you you could you could be exactly right. The the resources being biome locked that like that I think does so much for this game that people are underestimating and not thinking yeah. about uh, how many different ways that impacts the game. So yeah, no, you might be right. There, there's so many different reasons why someone could sit there and say, you know, well, I'm going against my guild and spawning over here to this particular node. You know, be it that, you know, they're going to be a cleric and they're going to pursue the freaking religious nodes, you know, aspirations to get the most out of that freaking cleric class or or whatever freaking other reason. I'm going to go jump back all the way back to freaking PvP for a second because that's where I had the question where I had the brain fart. And the, my question was going to be, do you plan to stream this game? Yes. Okay. Um so being I, yeah. that you are a crafter, is it just going to be like a crafting channel for eight hours or what, 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 what is your planned content? He asks us all the same questions. <laughs> oh, uh, no, that's That's great. It's a good question. And it, no, it's 100% something that I've thought about. Um, and, um, cause I mean, to me, you know, being a PVP -er, my, my, my content is going to primarily be that funny. Let's, gank this person let's gank mm -hmm. let's try to mm -hmm. let's try to get someone to cry today you know that right, that to right. me that freaking funny as shit right no i and, and I, I agree and that's fine um I, I the the primary reason why i have not already said i'm gonna be a crafter and i'm gonna make a crafting guild and that's the way i want to go is for the exact reason you just mentioned because i'm trying to be a content creator because i'm wanting to stream this game i'm not really sure people are going to want to watch me um run around and and mine rocks for eight hours right. a day um <laughs> yeah and, and so i i told i totally am on board with that um you know to you you could be a raider or a PVP or a combat player and still do the economic stuff. The biggest problem is just going to be, I think to get the most out of um, the most out of your artisanry and being in the artisan system, you're going to need to live in an economic node. You're going to need to be a member and a citizen of an economic node. And that's going to put you at a disadvantage to the people who are citizens of the military nodes. Um, and so that's where you're going to have to make that choice between I want to be wealthy or I want to be strong in the game and, and trying to sit in between or straddle that fence may be harder than, uh, I, you know, I don't know, but, uh, I think, I think node type is going to force everyone to choose. Yes. I, you know I it node type is going to be the defining factor you know is, of mm -hmm. how you play your game. Basically. That, that's really funny. Isaiah said, and he yeah. <laughs> X is the reason why the other three of us hate PVP. <laughs> you know it. Uh, you, hey, you want you want to know something? Again, I was 16 years old playing Ultima Online, and I only played it for about two years. And um, I can tell you, the name of my tormentor was Hemlock. I'm 40. <laughs> I'm 40 now, and I can tell you, Hemlock was the dude who tracked who tracked me oh down and killed me in the mines. Hemlock and was the name I used. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a paladin on WoW, human yeah. paladin back in in vanilla just yeah, in case so just in case yeah always hillsborough just ganking new let's see we oh, got that uh was not, that was we have five minutes left so re real quick um i, I just kind of mm -hmm. got two more questions for you what's the most what's the thing you're most excited for you know once you get in this game the, the thing you're most excited to get started doing all there i can't pick man i'm excited for the caravan system i think that's going to be just so much fun 
the the artisan system obviously i'm way into that because i'm thinking about i'm landing and going that way the whole concept of nodes and finding a node to settle in and getting with a group of people and leveling that node i'm excited about that i, I if i had to break it down i would say what i said earlier community just the the whole idea that we're going to have be forced to interact with each other and get to know the people around you and stuff i think is the the thing i'm most excited about what's the thing you're most excited for gandex uh, I, I just want something different, man. That, that's really what it is. But as I we know, this game different. so far, what's the one thing that you really has that, that you're excited for? What's the one thing? There's got to be at least one thing that you're really excited for. Honestly, the, the thing that excites me the most is the dynamic node system, the way that the world evolves differently. Like your server is going to evolve differently than any other server. Um, I think I think it's that. It's it. Crafter? Uh, the dynamic node system is also on the top of my list because that's one of the things that actually drew me to this game was the node system. But another thing that I'm really looking forward to seeing is I want to get my hands on the auction house because I want to see how they handle that in an economic node situation. And then, of course, for me, I mean, I'll go back and prove Asaya's point. I, I, I am so freaking and excited for the ships. I, I want to have my own ship and get a bunch of pirates out there and that sounds just, fun too. Just cause trouble. I, I am so, so looking many forward things, to that. So many things. There's so um, much stuff. Last question. If you've got one worry for the game, if you could talk to Steven right now and say, look, this is my biggest concern with the game right now, what would you say to Steven? Right this second, um, I am very concerned about the uh what looks at this point to be the very real possibility that we're going to have uh, animation canceling or light attack weaving, whatever you want to call it, where you're you're sp putting a light attack in between every single uh, one of your abilities at the high end of the game because it creates unbelievable number of problems. Um, ESO is an example of a game that has that. Um, and 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 right now, I'm the way that they've built that system. There's a possibility, and I think a pretty strong one, that that's going to be the meta. And I, I just I hate that. Like you can't believe. It. Keep in mind that combat system is being revamped. That's so. why I keep saying right now because I yeah. don't know what it's going to look like. Soon. And that's exactly what I mean. Right, right now. I mean, what mm -hmm. what is our chief concern? Because I, you know, I'm a firm believer. You know, it may get corrected, but unless they know it's something we want corrected, you know, unless you're vocal about it. That, that that old saying, you know, the freaking squeaky wheel gets the freaking oil. You know, it right. may be very early to be sitting there and expressing concerns. But again, like I said, I've seen in games in the past where nobody expressed the concerns. We just assumed. And then right. the game gets released with the freaking problem. Um, Gannix, do you, do you have anything right now that, you know, as far as right now, the game right, is right now, right second, uh, where are my fucking shields, Steven? I have yeah. no shield in alpha. I've actually submitted That's that legit. on the forums. There's no shields. Yeah. I'm playing tank. There's no shields. Seriously. That's legit. Uh, I like this guy. <laughs> Crafter. Uh, I want to play the game before I die. I would like to see it released before I die. So my biggest fear is feature creep. I want you guys to put this game out and be aware of feature creep. It's a very real thing. And I know that. So just be cautious. You always have expansions. Save some of them. And mine I expressed on your show the other night. Um, as a person who wears glasses, um, I don't want to be streaming for eight hours like this. I want voice acting in the game. I don't want to be reading everything. Roar and I both are in 100% in agreement with this. Um, every modern day MMO has voice acting. Please, 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 for the love of God, make sure it gets implemented into this game because, you know, like I said, you're in a so, PvP. It, you don't need voice acting. What's that? You just murder people. So you're going to PvP. You don't need voice acting. I could have quests to go murder Gander. I mean, why people. did you kill me, XY? <laughs> There's your voice acting. <laughs> <laughs> I could have a quest to go kill AOC Crafter. I mean, people. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. Zillin, thank you. 
thank you thank you I, especially on such short notice you got one last question really i i actually have a question yeah because i want to see his opinion i've asked you guys this before but okay so zillon we know that um oh, oh wait, a minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait i'm gonna cut you short on this recluse 74 just said cost factor on voice acting I am yes. going to rebuttal that right now with have you played League of Maidens that just came out? Granted, it's not an MMO. It's a uh, action RPG, whatever. It's created by a studio of three guys, and that has 100% full voice acting. You can't tell me wow. it can't be done, okay? I on, top of that, say, on top of that, we actually Bio had... Mean? Shut up. On top of the Biomutant <laughs> just came out. No, 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 I'm saying Biomutant just came out, and the way they do the voice acting is there's a narrator. I'm not saying this is the way Ashes should do it, but y when you interact with other characters, there's a narrator who tells you what they're saying, not them telling you what they're saying. So, right. so you don't like, hate a bunch it, of it, actors. It, they they do yeah, mumbles like uh, like old Zelda games used to do, where where the characters will mumble, and then or a Animal Crossing is a good example. They mumble like, in Animal Crossing, and then there's a narrator that actually says what they say and the last time we actually came across this particular topic someone in chat said the voice ais that they have now uh, what do you call what's what's the exact term i'm looking for the um i the, think voice ai is good but yeah, yeah you know voices the text to speech freaking things um okay. actually sound human enough now where they can actually just make a freaking script and have text to speech be a freaking human voice for these NPCs. There's no reason why it can't be done. You know, if, if, if it's in the past, also, yeah, you, yeah, had, uh, you had to hire a lot of freaking actors and you had, it was, it was a lot of money and it was a lot of freaking people and a lot of freaking time. But today, everything is so much freaking easier than it ever was. So right, really, there's no reason in the world why it shouldn't I be think, there in a modern MMO. I think Isaiah actually brought up a really good point. There's plenty of community who would voice a line or, or you know, a section of for dialogue free. for free. I, I, I almost bet that if, if, if uh, Steven asked just the alpha one players, backers, I bet everybody would be like, yes, send me something and I will read it off. Right. If you don't like it, resubmit it to me and I'll, I'll make a new. Just the only thing I ask is that NPC. I want him, I want his name to be extermicide. Mm -hmm. You know, just make an NPC with my <laughs> name and I'll do all the voice acting for him. No problem. But then you can't make a character named Extermicide. Right. Yes, I can. <laughs> so you want a PvP, huh? Let me train you. <laughs> All right, go go ahead and finish your freaking question with uh, Brazil. The NPC version of you murders you. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Karma at its best, right? Uh, can I go on with my topic? My, my, yes, my question yes, ask him because okay, we, we, so, we got to shut this down, man. Um, in raiding, we know that there is the possibility of dropping, you know, dragon eggs dropping that will then hatch into a, a mount. What are your thoughts on the possibility? And this is totally just in my own head imagination. The possibility of a cook making that into some kind of food as a legendary kind of food. Yeah, that would be really cool. Uh, my only thought on that would be if you had the choice, the food would need to be permanent because the mount is permanent. The mount is not permanent. Oh, the mount's not permanent. No, nope. no, no. So the, first, the mount has to be raised and then hatched. And most likely, the best way to do it would be through animal husbandry. So you'd have to give sure. it to a guildie who has animal husbandry. They'd have to raise it appropriately. It would hatch. And then you get it for 15 days, as I believe what it would They said it was, right a, it was a yeah. random it's number. A timer. It's a random number up to, I think they said up to 30, 15 to 30, but a random okay. number after, and it's and the timer starts from the day that you, you know, that it hatches or, or, or that you actually equip it for the first time for your mm -hmm. character. And then the timer starts to count down and then eventually the mount will die. Will die. Yeah. I mean, as, as long as the food had the same limitations, like it was a 15 to 30 day buff and it would need to be a damn strong one. But yeah, I, I, I said, you know, I, th I think I said this about 15 times on, on the, uh, the project creation podcast in the first, uh, couple, couple of weeks I was on it because plate kept asking me similar questions to that. And I'm like, I'm, I'm pro option, man. Like, give me options. Give us and all the options. That's how I love it too. Yeah. More so, options, the better. The better. It might be overwhelming, but it's better. 
in the yeah, long run. That's that's how I am personally. Give me the tools to enjoy myself how mm-hmm. I want. Mm-hmm. Zillin, it was a pleasure to have you on the show, especially at yeah. such short notice. And uh, if we ever get um, someone canceling out again, you know, we get a shortage. Uh, would you ever want to come back? Absolutely. I, 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 just, I have such a great time sitting around talking ashes with other people who are passionate about the game. I could do this. Like if the show lasted another three hours, I could sit here and do it. So, you, you um, know, it's yeah, funny that it's, you said that because when, when me, me, Gandex is the only original one here uh, besides myself. And we started the show off as a two hour freaking show. And then of course, everyone started complaining, yo, that, you know, long. it was too long, but but the two hours went by so freaking quick to us because you here you are discussing mm-hmm. stuff that you're just passionate about and you're 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 wanting to see and here we are freaking this is our thirty first episode I believe so nice yeah, yeah. I mean the show always seems so fast it, it does mm-hmm. it, you you can never get out as much information as you want but um it. it Hey, you know, that's what YouTube is for. So we can just get those Correct. little keywords in with each freaking video and yep. just grow over time. Guys, those of you who pop, popped in and said hi and participated, thank you. Don't forget to uh, go ahead and give the channel a follow. And thank right, you, up chat. There, right up there, there's that burning discussion. That's our Twitter. We will hit about, I think we're going to hit a thousand followers on our Twitter this week. Nice. Um, nice considering how young that Twitter account is pretty freaking impressive down below us is our individual channels the ones that each of us wanted to advertise so check us out and guys we will be back next Monday 9 p.m. Roar will be back Gandex may not be here hey you might not you might be able to come back next week you might come back next week yeah so hey, maybe um, let me know that's awesome that's awesome see I, I i love having backup plans and everything guys um <laughs> definitely make sure you, you you check out zillin's um personal youtube channel and i hit, I hit 600 subs today oh nice congrats, congrats. Nice. and the name of your <laughs> podcast again that you do a plate uh project creation so that's uh streamed on twitch on but twitch. and then the videos and are then, uploaded later to youtube later to youtube yep gotcha all right guys thanks for stopping by and we will catch you on the next burning discussion bye y'all have a good night guys peace